What's going on guys? Thanks for tuning back in to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying up a caddis pattern. This right here is a peep and tom caddis pupa. Um, I primarily tie this for Euro nymphing. Um, it's a nice slender profile, but it has that CDC and a little bit of um, hair's ear to create that pupa um, silhouette that uh, these caddises have when they're hatching. Um, and it also, with the CDC, it allows to hold some more air pockets and um, just look more lifelike when you're fishing um, faster water. So I'm gonna get a fresh hook in the vise and we will get going with this tutorial. So the hook we have the vise right now is our Fly Fiend 350WG. This is our jig hook. This is in a size 14. And I have that paired up with a three millimeter black slotted tungsten bead. The thread we're gonna be using is just some UTC 70 denier. This is in olive. And I'm gonna start my thread right behind this bead, building up a little bit of a dam just ensuring that bead won't be flying around everywhere. And I'm just going to dress my hook all the way down to the bend. Then I'm gonna bring it back up. So I'm bringing it back up to about a bead's length behind the back of that bead. And the reason for that is, well, for the reason that I um, put down a thread base first is so when I tie in my body part, it's not going to uh, spin around the hook. And the reason why I left a little bit of space there is for when I put the CDC in, I don't want to crowd the back of that bead up too much. So I want to uh, give myself enough space so I know I have enough room to tie all my extra materials in after the body. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of some standard ultra chenille. This is in fluorescent chartreuse. And I just cut about a card length. Um, this will make a lot of flies, probably at least three. So I'm gonna tie this in right on top of that hook shank, keeping that, that distance behind that bead. I'm just gonna make some thread wraps down the shank. And I want that chenille to stay right on top as much as possible. So right now I'm kind of just cleaning up these little fibers so they don't poke through when I dub the body. So I'm gonna cut this little piece now. And I usually kind of cut it a little bit shorter than um, I see some caddis pupa patterns, but I like it a little bit shorter. Um, I want this just to kind of peek out. I don't want a full blown um, kind of caddis coming out. So I just keep it like that. Then uh, I'm gonna grab a lighter. And once you hit it with the lighter, it kind of um, tapers and uh, looks a little bit more natural there. So just like that. So about a uh, hook gap from right here to here is my uh, peeping part of the uh, caddis. So for the body, we're just gonna be dubbing a, just a dub body, no rib or anything like that. And for our body, we're gonna be using um, Hemingway's UV Hair Dubbing Plus. This is in a brown olive. And I'm just going to be dubbing this um, really tight and really thin, because I don't want to add too much bulk to this, uh, to this fly. When I uh, tie my flies, I try to make them um, as thin as possible, so they cut water a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna bring this down to where I tied in the rest of that chenille. And I'm just gonna dub a little bit of a body here. I'm gonna try to keep this as level as possible. Um, if anything, I would start um, a little bit thicker in the back and taper towards the head. Um, when these uh, caddis are um, hatching, they actually come out the back, so uh, when you see them in the pupae state, they, um, they're really big in the back. 
but uh, I usually kind of keep it just just level all the way up and um, I still catch lots of fish so I like to kind of keep it as slim as possible so I'm just going to put a little bit more of this dubbing on here Just like so. So now we're going to tie in the CDC. I'm just going to trim this up, just kind of clean this up a bit. There's a couple pieces sticking out. So once the body's done, we're going to tie in a little bit of CDC. And for that, we're just going to be using some Super Select um, CDC. This is an olive. You can also use natural or um, brown. So I'm going to grab one feather out of this pack and I'm going to show you how I like to prep them for tying in collars. So with these Super Select, they uh, every, every uh, feather is pretty much the same. They're all really nice um, fibers. They're uh, equal on each side. This is by uh, American Sport Supply Inc. Um, I just got it at my local shop and uh, I'm really impressed with these. I can't say enough, uh, enough about them. So when you have this CDC in your hand and it's curving, you can see that it's kind of curving down to each side. I'm gonna hold it like that and I'm gonna strip off the left side all the way down. So it's like that. So it's just bare stem. Then I'm going to cut a little triangle at the front, just like that. That's just going to be a little anchor point for where I can tie in and I know it's not going to pull out on me. So the reason why I like to strip the one side is you don't really need much CDC in a fly. You probably only need about 10, 10 little fibers. Um, anything more than that is just going to hold too much water and it's not going to perform um, as good or as good as it should so what I like to do instead of tying in just one wrap of double-sided um, on each side of the stem what I like to do is just strip the one side and put it in twice wrap it in twice so this is going to allow those fibers to kind of stand more free and you're not going to have a bunch of fibers touching each other and um, it's just going to be able to let water go through this a lot nicer and um, I find that it uh, it's worth doing. So I'm just going to come in with my scissors here, cut out that little excess now what I'm going to do is get my fingers and I'm just going to kind of try to pull all these fibers rearward. It's just tricky a bit. So I can get one or two nice wraps over all of them so I know that that's not going to pull out at all. So now I'm just going to throw in a little dubbing loop here. And for our dubbing loop, we're going to put a little bit of a custom blend that I like to, uh, to tie in some of my nymphs. And it is a 50-50 blend. And it is 50% um, CDC and 50% um, hair's ear. So the CDC isn't really, um, just because it's 50-50, it doesn't have that much CDC in it. The hair's ear is a lot more dense and thicker than the CDC. Uh, so there's still a little bit of CDC kind of popping out and I just think it, uh, it looks pretty neat. 
and it uh, adds to the whole um, kind of pupa type fly. So I'm just going to throw in a pretty decent, um, a pretty decent amount of dubbing in there. It's about an inch and a quarter or so. And the reason why I put so much in there is because this hair's ear is so um, is so short. So when I actually pull this out, it uh, a lot of it comes out when I pull it out. So I'm actually just going to take my my fingers and kind of just brush this out. Uh, you can use a, you know, like a stone foe dubbing uh, picker or something like that. But with this 70D, it's kind of, uh, kind of fragile. So um, I find that sometimes if you use a piece of Velcro or something like that, it um, will either break the thread or um, fray it. So I'm kind of just coming in here, roughing this up a bit, trying to get out all the loose, loose fibers. So you're left with probably about an inch or so of a nice dubbing loop. And I'm just going to make two full wraps in here, and I'm just going to keep trying to keep all these fibers. I'm um, laying rearward. I'm just going to come underneath the that dubbing loop. I can cut it out. I like to pull back on that. I'm trying to make some nice tight wrap securing it. If you can uh, back wrap over your feathers and your dubbing loops, um, it's just going to add that much, much uh, durability to the fly. So I'm just going to throw a whip finish in here. Just like that. Pull down nice and tight. Now you can just cut your thread out. And I like to come in here after with my scissors and kind of just pick out any of those trapped fibers. It's not a uh, not a must, but definitely adds to the uh, to the overall fly. So I like to ideally have my CDC come to the back of that uh, chenille right there, just like that. And uh, yeah, it's an awesome pattern. Um, it cuts water actually really nice. Um, once this is wet, it kind of holds its, um, its silhouette and uh, you can euro nymph into some really fast pockets. And uh, I've gotten this down in some, some pretty fast, uh, fast water and uh, caught some fish out of it. So it's awesome. Uh, pupa pattern, uh, really good pattern for spring, uh, spring trout. So uh, I definitely recommend having a couple of these uh, sizes um, and even colors um, in your box. This is a 14, I also fish a 16, and I also have a couple 12s in my box uh, just in case the water is a little bit dirtier. Um, they uh, they kind of key in on some of those uh, bigger sizes. So hope you liked today's video guys. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the fly or any of the materials, you can drop that down in the comment section below. If you wanna see all the materials I used on this fly, you can check that in the description. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot again for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next one.